Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing Narve news because there have been several major leaks slash rumours which have started to circulate over the past day or two concerning AMD's upcoming graphics architecture. As a quick reminder, we are expecting two waves of Narve. The first is going to launch this year, and the second uh, Narve wave will be next year with next year's card. Uh, being significantly more powerful and of course we will see the GPU launch on the 7nm process much like we saw Radeon 7 but Narve will still be using an updated version admittedly but still using the GCN architecture I have been told by several sources and I've reported as such quite in depth before so I'm going to just kind of brush over it in this video but one of the key uh, things that uh, Raja Khodori was trying to fix with Narve was geometry and traditional rasterization performance. So they felt that compute with the GCN architecture, they had that down, but when it comes to push pixel pushing power, excuse me, as well as geometry performance, GCN has been not quite hitting the performance targets that AMD have been wanting to achieve. So therefore, well, Narve hopes to fix that. So let's start things out with the website forenix.com because they have noticed a lot of changes for the LLVM compiler. How many is a lot? I hear you ask. Well, around 11,000 lines of code. That is an awful lot of lines of code for the GFX 1010 architecture. This is not a smoking gun that we're going to see uh, the cards launch anytime soon but what it does show is AMD are getting ready for the third quarter launch that we keep hearing about. Now we also have a couple of other uh, whispers that have been sneaking around the internet and one of those comes from the website Tweaktown. The Narve that is launched in 2020 is going to be more powerful. The GPU architecture after Narve is said to, to just be called next generation. Some people have been referring to, referring to it as Arcturus just to make things simple but from what we understand Arcturus is just one GPU in the next gen lineup. It's not actually the architecture's name so for all we know it could actually be referenced as you know stellar mass 22 for the next generation architecture so some people refer to it as arcturus other people refer to it as next generation but just know it is amd's first architecture that is not based on gcf well technically speaking there have been like older generations of gpu from amd like let's say the 9800 pro that wasn't gcf but still this is like the next generation architecture from the company so what about Narve 20, which once again is going to launch next year? The website Tweaktown reports several interesting things. So according to uh, Tweaktown.com, their sources are telling them that we will see the RX 3090 XT graphics card, and it's going to cost 500 US dollars. The performance targets of this will beat the Radeon 7, which, well... I'd hope so, to be totally honest with you. According to Tweaktown, we will also see Narve 10 uh, being announced at E3 2019. This is going to be a week after Computex. And uh, we will also uh, next year see the RX 3090 XT, which will continue the 3000 series product branding. The card apparently will feature 64 compute units. 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and 10% more performance on average than the Radeon 7 and once again the card will be 500 US dollars. I've personally heard that Narvo 20 will feature ray tracing and uh, obviously Sony have confirmed that the PlayStation 5 has ray tracing and a couple of their studio developers have whispered that it might well be hardware ray tracing although uh, how this is actually implemented has not been confirmed by Sony. So it is a good chance that if the PlayStation 5 does have ray tracing, and once again my sources have told me that uh, Narve 20 does have ray tracing, but it's pretty logical that if the PS5 has ray tracing and it is using Narve, that there's a very good chance that Narve 20 would feature ray tracing anyway. Um, but as for the 500 US dollars for roughly a Radeon 7 performance, the question is, is that going to be enough? 
It is cheaper than, let's say, NVIDIA currently charging for the RTX 2080. Because when you say RTX 2080, you can essentially just, in your mind, replace that with a Radeon 7. Obviously, there are some performance differences. The Radeon 7 is noticeably better than the RTX 2080 in certain tasks, compute definitely being one of them. And some games do also really enjoy the benefits of the uh, AMD architecture, but overall the two cards are roughly close to one another. The big question though is, well, NVIDIA have a lot of choices uh, on their hands, one of those being a simple 7nm refresh of Turing. We've seen that Turing has been getting better yields, after all that's one of the reasons they're no longer going to be producing the A die for the RTX 2070 and 2080, because the yields now are getting so good that there's not really so many GPUs that are failing to meet the A uh, standards. So they just figure that uh, calling, uh, actually having a specific uh, set of uh, cards which they're considering like the A revision silicon is basically pointless. But obviously, uh, NVIDIA have a couple of options with their next generation of cards. The first is that they could just go with a refresh of 7nm. They don't really have to do much here. They can just shift to the 7nm node, maybe add a few additional CUDA cores if they want, and crank up the clock speed and profit with lols. The other option is that they could tweak the architecture. It doesn't have to be anything majorly fancy, but they can just do a few things on the back end and do the aforementioned other changes as well, like higher clock speeds, and it would, in theory, be enough to hold off AMD. And that's kind of the concern here, because AMD are not only using a different architecture um, to compete with NVIDIA, but they are also using the 7nm node, which is like, it's basically playing your entire hand. NVIDIA right now have just been like slightly tweaking the architecture to keep ahead, and they haven't had to go to a different node. And remember, they are on uh, the older process node, they're on the 12nm FinFET process, which is essentially like saying 16nm FinFET process. Admittedly, the 12nm is slightly more efficient and a few other tweaks, blah, 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 but it's nowhere near the jump of a 7nm node. We also have some other news, though, for Narve Turn. According to Adored TV, although there are a couple of other similar reports, Narve 10 will feature 56 compute units and sports a TDP of 190 watts. The performance targets here are RTX 2070, we've heard those many times over, so the performance targets aren't super surprising. And as for the price, it's going to cost 330 bucks, which would be, well, really impressive. Once again though, we are looking at 190 watts TDP. According to Jim as well, one of the issues that AMD have been really facing with Narve, and I have discussed this a couple of days ago, are the clock frequencies for the core. Basically, they're having real issues to hit the clock frequencies that they did with Radeon 7. And I also find the 56 compute unit number really interesting here. The reason is quite simple. I also find the 56 compute unit number really interesting because, in theory, uh, going by the PlayStation 5 specifications, which is around 12.9 T-flops, if you do the math and you kind of go through the specs in reverse, uh, judging from the APU that we saw, 1800 megahertz, just as a reminder, that basically means that you're in the mid-50 compute unit range. I'm saying basically because it does depend you know, I've heard performance targets for the PlayStation 5 being uh, the low 12 T-flop range or just about the 13 T-flop range. So let's just say, you know, 54 to 58 compute, compute units, I'm gonna split the difference and just say 56 for this video. So I would imagine that the APU on the PlayStation 5 is not gonna be anywhere near as uh, power hungry as 190 watts. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what AMD are doing there. Maybe there are some other ar architecture changes as well. You also have to though, take in consider consideration, excuse me, that the Radeon 7 GPUs have one advantage in power efficiency that's pretty much impossible for Narve to, at least for the consumer side when using GDDR6 to match, and that is that it's using high bandwidth memory. Vega was a power hungry beast, so AMD had very little choice but to use high bandwidth memory for Vega 
despite it being rather expensive to do so. That's why we never saw a GDDR5 variant of the card. So it's possible, therefore, that some of the power savings that they've uh, gotten simply by shifting to the 7NM uh, process as well as uh, architecture tweaks itself have simply been gobbled up by using GDDR6 memory. And we've all seen the engineering sample board with those two 8-pin power connectors. So that's not necessarily to say, though, that that's what... Um, the cards will be consuming. For one, we don't know whether this PCB is real. For two, we don't know what generation of Nave it's even for. It's even possible it's for a very custom card. Like if you were to take, let's say, a high-end RTX 2080 from MSI or Zotac or Asus or whatever, sometimes they will add additional PC, uh, sorry, yeah, PCIe connectors on the board to provide it more power because they've got much higher uh, performance targets on the uh, GPU and other the clock speeds are higher. So that's another possibility. Another possibility is AMD are simply tweaking things internally and being like, well, if we add uh, this extra power connector or we give the GPU this additional power um, and just kind of let the GPU run wild. What what can it hit? What type of uh, frequencies can it reach? And this is even possibly true if they have been uh, experiencing issues with the clock frequencies of the GPU. My personal opinion of Nave is that I think it's going to be an interesting architecture. I do think it's not going to be necessarily a disappointment because even if it's not faster than Turing, even if it's more power hungry than Turing, but it's cheaper. I think that's going to be enough for some people because some people really do not like noise, right? It, it just bugs them. Heat and noise are like, the, you know, pure evil to them. Others don't particularly care, particularly if you're water cooling the card. And also, it's going to be really down to what AIBs are capable of doing with the GPU, with their own custom cooling methods, and also what the coolers uh, AMD produce for like the reference models are going to be uh, like as well. As, assuming they don't sound like wind turbines, like uh, early Polaris, let's say RX 480, those cards were really noisy. Uh, the coolers for that did not sound particularly great. It sounded like someone was using a vacuum cleaner uh, in your rig, particularly if you were putting the cards at a high fan curve. I think right now there are just a lot of questions regarding regarding Nave, and unfortunately we don't have enough answers. I've been told that once again that the architecture is more efficient, that AMD are trying to fix the issues with Nava, uh, so the older iterations of GCN. We've heard, of course, that the performance targets are going to be RTX 2070, although some reports have said RTX 2080, but almost all of them, to be totally honest with you, have said RTX 2070. So ultimately, um, should you wait and buy Nave, or should you wait if you're right now considering buying a GPU? Well, my opinion is this. If you're only going to be spending around 300 bucks, then you can wait for a couple of months, then yes. But if you do have the cash right now to buy, let's say, an RTX 2070 or RTX 2080, and you're not going to be, like, super really angry if Nave, let's say, is roughly the same performance but for cheaper, then just buy a card now because ultimately we don't exactly know when Nave is going to launch. Like, I keep hearing it's going to be July, maybe August. It's possibly slipped back a month. But then again, there are some amazing titles right now like Devil May Cry and blah, blah, blah that you could be playing. So obviously that is just something for your consideration. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.